Man, I can't <laughs> wait to get back on the tour bus next week because the first show is in Myrtle Beach, and then after that we embark to Florida. So I'm forgetting about this snow. I'm taking my <laughs> snow boots just in case, but... <laughs> Yeah, right. Just to be you know. able to say that. You never know what's going to happen. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Well, talking the, uh, the the tour there with Static X and Seven Dust, um, you know, obviously this being new pod here, not fest.com, obviously new metal tinge podcast and just kind of the, the, the rebirth of like this, the scene that we all grew up in uh, kind of, you know, gaining new legs. Are you seeing like a lot of old friends, but also a lot of young kids at shows? Oh, well, you know, that's a good question. Absolutely. I just uh, did a phoner and I was saying, you know, me being 51 years old now, it's an incredible uh, thing to look out to the crowd. I don't say fans. I say family, because at this point I see a cat that's my age or older. And not only does he have his kids there with him, his kids have kids now. Right. And it's, like, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, my God, what, who's this little guy with a seven dust shirt on? Well, that's someone's those kids. You're a granddad now. Oh, OK, I'm not a granddad yet, but, you know, you get to see. This I, I, it's just a family affair to me, man. It's just like a, I never would have thought back then when I signed a record deal at 21 years old that it would have led to this now and the family that we have and the people that we've touched. And not only the people, I think they've touched us more than we than I would say that I've, we've touched them. Does that make sense? But uh, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, uh, it's been a lot of, if I have any advice for anyone out there, never give up because uh there's a lot of things that try to keep you down, but music to me, man, is a healer. And, I, and after all this time, I look out and I feel like when we're on that stage for 45 minutes to an hour, even with us, we get away from, man, my wife was fussing at me or I got to take care of that bill or something sick over here. Or, you know, it's life. Everyone goes through it. Even the guys that are the biggest rock stars in the world have to still deal with things that are that everybody deals with. And so all we're trying to do is get out there on that stage and for that 45 minutes for the hour, you just get to relax and decompress and, you know, just have a good time. And that's what it's all about. I feel like I'm a doctor and I'm just here to give some people some medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, like you said, man, music is definitely a healing force, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of it too. Like back, back in the day, especially in the early two thousands, you know, mm -hmm. like just, you know, you think about how many parents are just like, what's that music going to do for you? You're never going to do it. And that's like, now those, like you said, those kids have kids have kids now, you know, it's, yeah. I, think that just, I think that just shows really how powerful this music really is and what it's become. Oh yeah. I remember, I remember my mom and them wondering what, what I was doing, you know, cause I have, it was always music around. I mean, I was all, all kind of music around in our house. So it was never anything like you have to only listen to this or this, but I do remember, you know, them hearing some metal songs and stuff. I mean like, Oh, what's going on? <laughs> what's wrong with Johnny? They still call me Johnny. I'm like, and nothing, nothing. It's all good. They, they, they get it now. They're like, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I, I still remember one of my, I've told you this story before, but it was on a phone or a long time ago, but when I grew up in Nashville, obviously I saw, uh, uh friends with Chris Arkin, all that stuff. So I met you guys way back in the day and I saw yeah. you guys at a club called 328 and your grandparents were there. All your family was there and your grandmother Yoma. had the most fun I've ever seen. Of a, and she was like, that's my grandbaby up there. Yes. Just like going on and on about how, how proud of uh, you she was. Oh man, those people. Oh, let me tell you what. I'll rest their souls. They, I wish they were still around. Uh, they were so proud of me and uh, the accomplishment that we were, you know, doing uh, as a young black man too, you know, being in the industry that, uh, that we're in was really important and special for them. So for my grandma to see before she died, to see us at, at the level, well, you know, not at the level, but you know, hey, people knew her songs, and grandma was like, oh my God, this is, you know, yeah. so, oh man, you know, it's a dream come true. You know, thank you for remembering that. That just, uh, awesome. anytime I go back to Nashville, it's always hard, but I love that place so much, man. I still, all my family's still there. My auntie just finally sold uh, my granddad's house right behind East High School. <laughs> okay, geez. Wow. And it probably yeah, sold no, for some crazy money. Ripped off, but she sold it. Yeah. <laughs> 